Hello everyone, Bob is in the house and ladies and gentlemen we are about to witness the fourth studio album by Nicki Minaj. There is no point for me to explain who Nicki Minaj is at this point, I'm, I'm sure that you know who Nicki Minaj is. She's extremely popular, she's a well known female rapper uh, who I really respect and uh, who I really like. Uh, who I, I like her music and um, her last album the pink print was actually pretty good for me i was listening to it a lot so now <laughs> um let's jump into this one the fourth one uh it's called queen first reaction let's go track one ganja burns and uh, ganja is a, a narcotic <laughs> it's a drug uh, and the reason why i know that is because of eminem which is a feature on next track. I'm really excited about that. Eminem just had uh, uh, "Must Be a Ganja" track on his Relapse album, which is a nice track. Anyway, Ganja Burns, track one. Dance hall. Pretty cool uh, instrumental. I really like it. Oh, okay. So this album is gonna be about women empowerment pretty much. To be honest, like instrumental is really great, but I feel like Nicki Minaj's performance could have been a little bit better. Oh. Huh. Okay, with that verse actually about rappers, like she's gaining uh, my appeal back. <laughs> Like the second verse has better flow, more passionate approach, more more passionate delivery. I don't remember Nicki Minaj uh, using drugs at all. I don't remember her being high. I mean, I don't live with her. I don't. I'm not involved in her personal life at all. But it's just like she's saying when I get high, I'm thinking about you and. Uh, like I remember she told us that she don't drink alcohol that much at all like she doesn't like the taste of it uh, and uh, and I feel like the same was with the drugs uh, so that's interesting that she's using the ganja references and I'm talking about being high of course uh, if I'm wrong let me know down in the comments below track 2 Majesty featuring Eminem and Labyrinth. Ooh, Labyrinth is coming in already with this vocals. And I love the instrumental as well. Okay. Okay. Bitch. Verse and then coming back to that chorus with Labyrinth. Fantastic. I really enjoying this track so far. <laughs> I'm excited uh, about Eminem's verse, like what he's gonna say. Ah, okay, finally, <laughs> you're going in, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, really colorful, powerful, playful verse by Eminem. I really love it. Nikki's being innovative with her flow, like she's trying out some different new stuff, which is definitely awesome. Okay, awesome. Yeah, like uh, this kind of changes with her flow, with her delivery, definitely will bring in, in more variety to this album. And like, since this album has 19 tracks, uh, you gotta <laughs> deliver uh, more innovation, uh, cool stuff uh, to the table all the time in order to keep the album interesting, keep the listener uh, inside of this album, you know, locked in basically. So 
um, I, I loved it uh, Eminem you know when every time he comes in he uh, steals the show like that's how it is uh, but Nicki Minaj and especially Labyrinth, Labyrinth as well um, they did a great job I really satisfied with this track uh, definitely adding this to my playlist and uh, yeah uh, oh, I wanted to discuss about it a little bit. Uh, Eminem and Nicki Minaj, uh, is there a relationship between them? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below as well what you think about it. Like, I feel like they're trolling us. Uh, yeah, Nicki Minaj said, yes, I'm having a relationship, but like, I feel like it was just like for the joke. Uh, but I'm not excluding the fact that, I'm not excluding, not, it's not a fact, but excluding the thing that um, Nicki Minaj. Uh, uh, maybe slept with Eminem. The reason I'm saying saying that because like other people can hear it, but um, yeah, slept with Eminem probably because you know like Nicki Minaj is mm, juicy and <laughs> and Eminem is a well-respected man, so um, maybe uh, you know they had some fun one day, but <laughs> uh, I don't know about the relationship. Track three, Barbie Dreams. <laughs> This song, by the way, is the most popular as of now on iTunes. Yeah, definitely. Dope, dope song already. Like, damn, Nikki's talking about everybody. <laughs> Bringing some truth and revelations about everyone. Yeah, I was about to say the track is not over. But it was fading out for the transition actually. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely a great track. Track for oh, wow. Rich Sex featuring Lil Wayne. I already heard this. Nice. It's an okay track, but uh, nice. doesn't have much yeah. repeat value for me. But in the album context, to be honest, it's, it's nicer. I feel like when I will be listening to the album as a whole, I will not be skipping this track, so it's nice, it's good that uh, it's not that bad track that I will be skipping it, you know. Alright, track 5. Hard white. I like the sound. I like the sound of it. Sonically, it's, it's pretty cool. What I understood from this track is that um, Nicki Minaj is saying work hard, but you know it works smart as well because sometimes if you're working hard like still it's not gonna pay off um you know work with the mind you know like um do right decisions basically because like she's saying uh, i used to work hard but i still would get only uh half back you know instead of uh the whole thing <laughs> uh yeah like she used to work hard just to get half back um, also there are people who still might have the best lines um, maybe it's about Remy Ma actually I, but I'm digging at this point like she said that yeah like you might be, be really great uh, with your wordplay with the lyrics but uh, still I am better than you because uh, I've done more sales than you I've much more popular than you uh, and the reason why is because you know I've done right decisions I uh, was uh, in the right place at the right time 
I, I know how this business works. But again, uh, if I'm wrong on this, uh, please let me know in the comments below what, you, what do you think on this track, uh, what was your take on this track 6 Bad featuring Ariana Grande. Um, I heard this track, not a bad track, uh, pretty chill, pretty smooth, pretty cool. Like, it's great to listen to this track uh, at the beach, uh, you know, like um, close to the sunset. Uh, it gives you that those vibes, it's really nice uh, track on that. But other than that, like I didn't catch myself listening to this track too much. Um, it was it was okay, as I said, but uh, nothing too special for me. Seven thought I knew you, featuring the weekend. <laughs> All right, let's get it then. Let's turn the volume up. Yes. Yep, loving the track, loving the track. Abel said you play uh, the victim every time and <laughs> I feel like this is really um, uh, relatable for Drake I mean you can say that to Drake you know that's him like he plays the victim all the time in my opinion uh, when it comes to relationships although we love his love song and stuff but um, I have a hard time trusting Drake anymore uh, these days to be honest uh, it feels like he had so many uh, women, like, he's a player actually, but in the songs, like you see him how like he's struggling over this woman and stuff like that. But then, uh, but but with the actions that like, he's actually doing, like it doesn't match. It's not matching to his words. Um, anyway, let's continue. Yeah, man, um, love the song. Uh, fantastic production. Amazing weekend as always as I told you he, like he eats it every time <laughs> the tracks uh, He is amazing on uh, On music, you know, uh, his take on music is fantastic Nicki Minaj also did a great job and uh, to be honest I feel like the singles are the weakest songs so far on this album the single rich sex I didn't really like bad is okay as well Chan Li is fine too, but like these tracks are not extraordinary at all, but tracks like I Thought I Knew You, which we just heard, Barbie Dreams or Majesty, those are the fucking great tracks. And at least one of those tracks should have been promotional singles to this album rather than what we heard by far because like my expectations weren't great by listening to those tracks. I thought oh like if this three songs are singles of this album Probably other songs are even like you know worse than this uh, in quality, but no, like what I'm hearing actually is uh, vice versa. Like I'm hearing that the singles are weakest songs on this uh, album so far, at least, uh, which is of course nice and uh, it's a great surprise. However, uh, maybe um, the sales of this album would have been even more if she dropped better songs in quality prior to this album. Um, track 8, Run and Hide. You see like it's already much more interesting than uh, let's say Chan Li. Like this instrumental is intriguing you, like we're about to enter some world of adventures. <laughs> in this adventure we're gonna run and hide. <laughs> I like this track. Um, instrumentally, it was uh, great. Um, lyrics was pretty cool too. Um, Nicki Minaj, I think they uh, she um, took a nice approach for the song when uh, she was talking about her trust issues. Um, I feel like the sentiment and the instrumental behind it worked pretty well together, to be honest. So 
Um, nice job, Nikki. And uh, track nine, let's jump into it. Uh, and it is Chan Sway featuring Sway Lee. Uh, Sway Lee is nice, but six minutes <laughs> of this track. Uh, hopefully, it will be worth it. <laughs> skipping this um, because 19, we have 19 tracks we gotta listen to it all and I should be sure that this video is not gonna be like a one hour long like it should be much shorter than that so we're gonna skip the song although I really would recommend you to check out my reaction to Chan Li when it first came out uh, yeah it's in here uh, please click because look, I really had fun uh, filming that video uh, I was pretending to be Jackie Chan and uh, Nicki Minaj was my uh, student, also Jaden Smith was my student and my sister was involved in the uh, shooting, so it was pretty cool, uh, definitely check it out. Track 11, LLC. I gotta say, bro, like the production is top notch. I also love the features she brought in in this album, and of course herself. Nicki Minaj is doing a great job. Okay, not a bad track, um, but for me this tra track is a little bit weaker um, than um, a lot of tracks on here. Uh, but the instrumental was pretty cool. It just it stayed the same throughout the whole track, and I wish there were there was some maybe a switch up. Or transition to something else because like for almost four minutes hearing the same ting, 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 and Nicki Minaj doing something on, on top of it wasn't really interesting to be honest uh, track 12 good form mm. okay okay uh -huh. Nip tuck. Yep. Yeah, this one is pretty awesome. It actually reminds me of the last album, Pink Print. Actually, no, not uh, Pink Print. Um, my mistake. Um, it reminds me of the second album. Um, uh, gosh, what was it? Pink Friday? That was good. Yeah, definitely brought back to simpler times. It was nice. Uh, track 14 Too Late, Too Late Interlude. I said I'm cool on it, baby. This one already is 
kind of out of place. It's 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 not a well transition from the last track we had. It just abruptly starts. Like there's no smooth transition to one thing to another. So kind of I don't know why it was made like this. I question this interlude. Like why? Why this? We need this interlude basically between this. Track 15, come see about me. Okay, another beautiful track. Yeah, in this track she was um, basically instead of bragging about something or being cocky, um, she you know, went in tune with her emotions. Um, she's missing that boy. She wants him back. She wants to say, "Hey, like, come see about me, like how I'm doing." And you're gonna see that I'm not actually doing well without you because I'm missing you. Um, so yeah, this it's a it's a good change of uh, things, <laughs> like. You know, we're, we're getting a lot of um, braggadocious lyrics, colorful word plays, but uh, you know, um, Nicki Minaj always has this uh, romantic or um, love songs um, as well on her album. So it's not a surprise. Track 15 or 16 actually. Yeah, Sir featuring Future. <laughs> Some other guy, but yeah, that was, like, was pretty surprising. Mm. Oh, I must say, this <laughs> a bit too long to be honest. Um, Nicki Minaj, though still a fantastic rapper um many people don't appreciate her enough in my opinion especially in the rap community um you know we focus on the male rappers and we don't bring into the table female rappers uh, you know not in the table but like uh, into the discussion uh, female rappers um like cardi like Nicki minaj or uh, remy ma uh, Iggy Azalea. I gotta say Nicki Minaj is really influential. She has multiple uh, I think it's like close to a hundred tracks on Billboard already. She's always featuring on uh, other people's tracks or uh, her solo stuff um, is always there as well like she never stopped working. She has a lot of uh, records on Billboard 100 and I think she's uh, number one in history uh, by holding uh, amount of tracks on Billboard 100 uh, in terms of uh, females but still Nikki I feel like, like she is not appreciated enough her skills are great uh, her word wordplay is awesome as well um, you know she's really playful she's um, she can basically make great hits and this album has plenty of them now let's get into uh, track 18 Coco Chanel featuring Foxy Brown <laughs> Foxy Brown. Uh, not impressed with Foxy Brown at all. 
just ruining the song definitely. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Track 19, Inspirations Outro. I was about to pause the song because that was the ending of track 18. But it keeps going on track 19. Well, we can say that we have 18 tracks instead of 19 then. This was just a continuation of the last track. I don't know what was the purpose of separating the dead on the track list and have that ending as a separate track. But okay, well, that's the <laughs> that's Queen, that's Queen, that's the album. A little bit too long, a little bit too long. Um, I, whoo, I'm exhausted <laughs> by listening to Nicki Minaj at this point. <laughs> oh man, I mean, it's a good album. It has a lot of good tracks, but definitely I, um, I will not be listening to all tracks again. Um, I will probably get uh, best songs for me. To my track list and we'll be listening um, there but as an album um, still not bad I, I understand why she has 19 songs here because first of all she was not releasing any album for four years so her fans needed a do like big dose of her uh, second of all songs are still not bad like the, the quality doesn't drop down maybe a little bit uh, I um, like I like the first half better because it has more features. It has like a little bit better songs, but the quality of of songs still are fine. It's still top tier in the second track in the second uh, half of the track list. So different people will like different songs from this album. That's why um, you know if I like, for example, track thirteen. And I will get track 13 from to my playlist. Other person might like more, um, I don't know, track 15, and get that into the playlist. But uh, I will say most of the people will for sure get to their, their playlist um, tracks like Majesty, Barbie Dreams, um, Thought I Knew You, Run and High was pretty cool actually. Chance Way was good too. Uh, Chan Li, if they didn't hear it for a million times at this point, they will also get that. Forum was also nice, Nip Tuck was also nice, Come See About Me was also uh, pretty good. Um, and Coco Chanel was cool. cool, only Foxy Brown feature is disappointing for me. And Ganja Burns as an, as an intro was pretty cool as well. So yeah. So not not bad album at all. Not bad album. I will give it um, seven out of ten. Anyway, that's it for this reaction. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next ones. <laughs> Goodbye. Gosh, that I could have this moment for life. For life. For life.